Hi and welcome to Clapier. In this video, we will see how to create an inventory management app. Effective inventory management is crucial for smooth operations for any business. And with Clapier, you can ease this process. You can use it for tracking and managing movement of goods or ensuring stock level. For this video, I will take an example of having an inventory app to maintain stock levels and another app where employees can update stock. First, I'll create an inventory app from scratch. Once you log into Clapier, click on New App in your dashboard. In the Design app, I'll create an app for keeping an MIS. Now, if you already have readily available data for stock, then you can bulk upload that data into this app. But first, you will need to create the app structure. I will give a name to this app over here called Inventory MIS. Then I'll click on Add Section and give a name to this section on the right-hand panel under Section Name, say SKU Master. Click on Save. Then I'll click on Add Field and use some of the pre-coded blocks available here to capture data. If you would like to know how each of these blocks work, you can check out our videos on them. So for the first field, I'll click on the single line text block for capturing item code. On the right hand panel, I will change the label to item code. Click on save. Instead of using the single line text block for item code, you could also use the code scanner block to scan QR codes or barcodes if you have any. Now I'll go ahead with the other fields. I'll use another single line text block for capturing item type. Then another field for capturing the brand. Next would be price. Then another field for current stock. And finally the unit. For this I will use the drop down block and change the label to unit. And under options I will list them one after the other. And save this. So this is just a base structure of an app to maintain the SKU master. You can always change it according to your requirements. It does not necessarily need to have the same fields. Now once you have finished creating your app structure, you can either go to step 2 for additional configuration. So if you want to configure your print settings to have PDFs, you can configure it. Or if you want to have multiple statuses for submissions such as in stock or out of stock, you can add them over here or you can directly jump to step 3 which is workflows. Workflows is important if you want to incorporate your business process flow into your apps. When I click on start, you can see the various workflow nodes available for you to use. Now for example, if a stock is running low, emails need to be sent out to relevant teams or people. For this, we can set a workflow to check stock level and send an email notification if the stock is low. So first we would need to check the condition if the stock is low or not. For that, we use the if node. On the right hand panel, you can configure the if node to check for certain conditions. This if node works similar to spreadsheet logic as we share a similar library. In place of cell numbers, we have the concept of variable names which you can call out over here. Now as I mentioned, if the current stock is less than a certain amount, then send out an email. So I'll call out the variable for the current stock, which we had over here in the design app. So under condition, I will type in at the rate current stock. And if the stock is less than 10, then the reminder email should be sent. So less than 10 and click on save. Once the condition is checked and if the stock is low, then send out an email notification. So underneath the if node, I will add an email node. To configure the email node, it is similar to just sending out a simple email. So under two email addresses, you can type in the various email addresses to whom you wish to send the email notification. If you have multiple email addresses, you can list them out separated by comma. You can also list the email addresses under CC. Next, we have subject and then body. Next, if you have configured PDFs, you can enable this option to include them here to send them as attachments in the email. Or if you want to send attachments that is available in your system, you can drag and drop the file over here. Now click on save. Now I will create another app for employees to enter data for incoming stock of items and interlink it to this app. So this would make the inventory MIS app act as a database. I'll go back to the dashboard and click on new app. In this second app that I will be creating, it will be for stock entry made by the employees. So if any stock is coming in, they can enter the details in this app. Or if a new product has come in, which is not there in the inventory MIS app, they can enter the details over here. And the details entered in this app should get reflected in the inventory MIS app. So I will be interlinking this app to the first app that I just created. First, I'll give a name to this app, say stock entry. 
then click on add section and give a section name as item update. Now since I want to update the data from this app to the inventory MIS app, I will need similar fields. So I'll click on add field and then use the get data from other apps block. On the right hand panel, I will change the label to select item. The data source app will be the inventory MIS app. When I click on the selection fields, you can see all the fields that is there in the inventory MIS app and I will select the fields with which I want to search the items with. So it could be item code, type and maybe even brand. Based on the search criteria, I will pull certain fields from the inventory MIS app. So it will be item code, type, brand, price, current stock and unit. Basically all the fields that was there in the inventory MIS app and then click on save. So this will give me the details of the items selected from the inventory MIS app. Now if I want to update the item, I will add another field, click on single line text and change the label to new stock. So this will be the field in which the employee will enter data for the amount of incoming stock of any item. Similarly, I will create another section in case a new product has arrived, whereas the first section is for those items that are already existing in the inventory MIS app. So I'll click on add section and give the section name as new item. And then identical to the inventory MIS app, I will add the fields for this section. I have added all the fields over here. Now I'll add another section at the beginning of this app so that the employee can select either item update or new item. So I'll click on add section. I can remove the section name. Click on add field, then select the single selector block. On the right hand panel, I will change the label to select and give the options as the section name, which is item update and new item and save this. Now click on item update section. On the right hand panel, go to the advanced option under display the section if. Here also you will be able to give logic and conditions similar to spreadsheets. So if the employee selects item update, then in the app, only the item update section should appear. So over here, I will type in at the rate select equals to item update. This means that we are giving a display condition. If you would like to know and understand how sections work or how display conditions work, you can check out our other video on sections. It gives a detailed description. Next, I will click on new item section. On the right hand panel under advanced and under display the section if, I will type in at the rate select equals to new item and save. Now let's go to the app home where the app is live and ready to use to see how it looks like. As you can see the item update and the new item section have not appeared in this app but when I click on item update the item update section appears and when I select new item the new item section appears. Since new item and item update have fields identical to the inventory MIS app any new stock that is coming in or new item these changes should be reflected in the inventory MIS app. To do this, we use workflows. So I'll go back to the design app and go to step three of workflows. Now say if it is an item update, where an item already exists in the inventory MIS app and you just want to update the stock for this, we can use the edit submission node. But first the workflow needs to check that condition. So I will use if node. On the right hand panel, I will give the condition to check whether it is an item update. So I'll call out the variable at the rate, select, equals to item update. Save. And then underneath the if node, I will use the edit submission node. On the right hand panel, under select app, I will select the inventory MIS app since I want to make edits to that particular app. Now once I click on filter, to know which submission to actually alter, you will need to match a field from this app to the inventory MIS app. Choose the field from the inventory MIS app to match with the stock entry app. Item codes are generally unique for every item so this will be very helpful in matching them. And then underneath this you will have to type in the variable of the item code from the stock entry app. So that will be at the rate item code. If you need to check and confirm the right variables you can always go back. So under item update the item code variable is this. Since the only change will be the stock under set field values, you can make the edits. So click on add field and from the inventory MIS app, the current stock would need to be changed. And whatever stock is entered in the stock entry app should be added to the existing stock in the inventory MIS app. So for that, I will type in over here at the rate current stock. The one shaded in gray is the variable for the inventory MIS app. So I'll select this 
plus at the rate new stock which is the field in the stock entry app under item update now i'll save this now to check for the condition if it is a new item then again under start i will give an if node and on the right hand panel under condition i will type in at the rate select equals to new item if it is a new item, then a new submission would need to be made in the Inventory MIS app to maintain the database. So under this if node, I will select Create Submission node. On the right hand panel, I will select the app for Inventory MIS. You can see these are all the fields that is there in the Inventory MIS app. So for item code, I will have to type in the variable which is there in the stock entry and match it with the item code of the Inventory MIS app. So here I will simply type in at the rate item code. You can see that there are two item codes over here. To know which is which, simply go back to the design app, click on the new item section and over here you can see the item code variable along with the other field variables and I will use the same in the workflow. For item type, I will give an at the rate item type. For brand, at the rate brand. Price will be at the rate price. Current stock, at the rate current stock and add the rate unit for unit and click on save. Now let's see how the apps work. First I will make an entry in the Inventory MIS app. So when I click on the Inventory MIS app in my dashboard, I will be taken to App Home and I can enter the details over here. So I'll do that really quickly. Then click on submit. You can view all your submissions under the submissions tab. And when you click on any submission, a right hand panel will appear capturing all the details. Now if you already have readily available data and you do not want to manually enter it like I just did, then you can always bulk upload your data. To know how bulk upload works, you can check out our video on that as well. All you have to do is click on this option and click on the link that says download this blank spreadsheet. A blank spreadsheet will get downloaded, then just enter in all the details under the relevant headers and then simply upload it over here. Now that I have entered data for the Inventory MIS app, let's see how the Stock Entry app fits into this. So I'll go back to the Stock Entry app, go to App Home. Now let's say it is an item update and I get some incoming stock for this particular item. So the employee can select item update and under select item, he can either type in the item name or the item code or the brand or he can simply search from the list that appears over here. Since I have made only one entry, you can see that single entry over here. And the moment I click on it, all of that items detail appears over here. So this stock entry app will pull information from the inventory MIS app. So let's say I've got some new stock for this particular item and I would like to update it in the inventory MIS. So currently the stock says 11 and if I've got 10 more of this under new stock, I can simply type in 10 and then click on submit. Even for this app, you will be able to view your submissions under the submissions tab. Now that I have made a submission, it should have triggered the workflow. So it should check whether it is either item update or new item. Since I selected item update, it should edit that particular submission in the inventory MIS app. So let me go back to the app and then refresh the submissions tab. And you can see over here the current stock now says 21, which was 11 plus 10. Similarly, if I have a new product arriving, which does not exist in this app. So back in the stock entry app in app home, I can select new item and then given all the details and then click on submit. If I go back to the inventory MIS app, click on refresh, you can see a new submission has now appeared. Now for this particular app, we have configured the workflow to send out an email notification if the current stock is less than 10. So I will make an entry in the inventory MIS app for this particular example. I'll fill in the details really quickly and click on submit. If I check the submission stack, a new entry has been made with the current stock less than 10. Now this would have triggered the workflow to check for the condition and since it is low, I will have received an email notification in my inbox since I give my email address. So let me just check that. And as you can see, I have received the email notification with the subject and body that I had given. You can also see that I have received it from noreply at clapier.com. If you wish to change this, you can configure the SMTP settings in your Clapier workplace. We have a separate video on that if you wish to know how to change the settings. So based on the notification, relevant teams or people can check on the item and then update it from the stock entry app. Now that we have seen how an email notification is sent, if an entry is made in the inventory MIS app, we can do the same if the current stock is deducted from the stock entry app. 
So for example, this particular item, the current stock is 12. If I were to deduct it from the stock entry app, I would still need an email notification to be sent. However, for the workflow that I had configured, it is under the new submission flow. So right now, even if I were to deduct it from the stock entry app, I will not receive the email notification. So let's just check that. Under select item in the stock entry app, I will select that particular item. The current stock is 12, so I will deduct 3 to make the levels less than 10 and click on submit. If I were to go back to the inventory MIS app, you can see the current stock for this item now says 9. But in my inbox, I have not received the email notification. To do this, in the inventory MIS app, go to the workflow. And since we have configured this workflow under new submission flow, I will give the same configuration under edit submission flow. This means that since an entry is being edited from another app into the inventory MIS app, then any edited submission, the workflows will come under edit submission flow. Any new submission that is being created either from this app or from the stock entry app will fall under new submission flow. So right now under edit submission flow, I will give the same configuration. Now that I have configured the workflow under the edit submission flow, identical to the new submission flow, in the stock entry app, if I were to deduct from the current stock of any item, it should now send me an email notification if the stock is less than 10. So let's say I pick this item. The current stock is 21, so I'll deduct 12 from it for it to be less than 10 and click on submit. Now if I go to the inventory MIS app, you can see the current stock for that item it has now become 9 and I should now receive an email notification in my inbox. As you can see, I have now received the email notification due to the workflow that I just configured. This setup should also work in the mobile app. All you have to do is download the Clapier app either on Play Store or App Store. And the moment you create and configure your app, it should be live and ready to use on the mobile app. So let's check that. Over here, you can see the mobile screen with the Clapier app downloaded on it. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And then I will click on the stock entry app. So let's say I click on item update and then click on select item. So let's say I select this item. It has pulled the information from the inventory MIS app and I can update the stock over here. Then click on submit. Even in the mobile app, you will be able to view all your submissions. If you want to check the submissions in the inventory MIS app, then I'll go back, click on the inventory MIS app, click on the button over here and you can view all your submissions, which was even done in the web. If I click on this submission, you can see the current stock has been updated to 15, which was 9 plus 6. You can also build another app for tracking logistics for the inventory or you can also create another app for billing customers. If you create another app for billing customers, you can link it to the inventory MIS app to deduct from the current stock. You can also go to app templates, which is available on the left hand side of your workplace. And we have a readily available template for inventory management over here. So all you have to do is click on it and then click on import. The configured apps will appear on your dashboard and you can customize it according to your requirements in case you do not want to make the app from scratch. If you have any queries regarding how to create an inventory management app or want to know how to use any feature in Clapier, you can always request support by clicking on the button over here or you can email us directly to support at clapier.com and we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you.